Hey, what's creepier than creepy kids? Only more creepy kids, of course. That's why we're reading from Tales from the Crib today from Casey Hill. Let's get it started. Thanks for joining me again here on First Chapter Freak Show. I'm your friendly horror author, Carver Pike, here with another episode. We're on actually on episode 16. That's pretty awesome, man. I did post recently that I was going to start doing the shows only once a week. Um, that's why there wasn't one that came out this Tuesday. This one here, well, you'll see it on Friday. But I might change that up a little bit. We'll see. I just don't want it to get in the way of the writing. You know what I mean? I need to write books, too. So, um, But... I might be able to throw two two a week together still. We'll see how it goes. Maybe some weeks will be one or two. It just depends. But I'm not completely dropping the two, only because our list of authors, man, is long. If I were to break it up to one episode a week, we have over a year's worth of content, which sounds awesome. But how awesome do you think that is for the authors that are waiting for their book to be read? I mean, by the time a year rolls around, they may have another book, two, three, four out. Who knows? Some authors are dropping books like hotcakes, man, like candy. It's just crazy. So, do you drop candy? Do you drop Do you drop hotcakes? I don't know. What do you drop? You drop dimes? You drop change? Fuck it. I don't know. Who knows? Anyways, what I do here, I'm horror author Carver Pike, as I said before, and I like to read the beginnings of my horror author friend's books. Sometimes that means a prologue. Sometimes a prologue first chapter or first chapter two. Today's case is Casey Hill author, her Tales from the Crib. It's a collection of stories and limericks, poetry, stuff like that. Um, and the first story is quite long, so I've actually talked to her about it. She gave me a stopping point. I'll tell you what that is in just a little bit, but I, pro I won't make it through a whole story, I don't think. We'll see how it goes today. But um, it is a long story, so I think it'll be more like half the first story, probably. Um, I always tell you, make sure no little one's around. I think I've already dropped an F-bomb this episode. Um, so just make sure you don't have anyone with, you know who doesn't like to hear foul words and filth and the foul and filth and extreme stuff. And a lot of times I read extreme horror, you never know what I'm going to say. I don't even know what's in these books. So be careful with who's around and what they might hear. On that note, um, some of the stuff I read is extreme, so just be aware of that. And um, remember that I'm not necessarily reviewing these books. I'm not telling you they're great books or go buy them. That's up for you to decide. The whole idea here is for you to listen to me read the book, decide if you want to continue that relationship with that author. Do not judge the authors, please, on my reading abilities. If you hear me fumbling around words, that doesn't mean there were grammatical errors or anything like that. It could just mean that I, you know, just started bumbling around and doing my bidip bidip. I do that quite often, so I do fuck up from time to time. Real quick, just a reminder, go to Killer Costin, go to Killer, Killer Costin, go to KillerConAustin.com and register for 10 bucks to be at the virtual con this year. That is the weekend of August 20th through 22nd. I'm doing a live reading there. Um, I'm also part of a panel, so that's pretty cool. There's so much cool shit going on. A lot of extreme and splatterpunk authors, uh, just horror all around uh, for the whole weekend. I mean, it's like back to back to back to back, just panels and readings and contests and games, and it's a lot of fun. So make sure you go to KillerConAustin.com and sign up for that. Only 10 bucks. Uh, also... The Haunted Majestic, if you are coming to the West Virginia area at the end of October, October 30th at the Haunted Majestic, uh, it's not a hotel, it's actually a, a, a boat, haunted ship boat, um, we're doing the, the West Virginia, the Horror Writers Association West Virginia chapter, we're sending a bunch of authors there, I will be there live uh, at the center in the pavilion there signing books. And uh, I'd love to meet you guys if anyone's in the area or can come to the area. It's October 30th. Go to hauntedmajestic.com to get more information about that. There's some actors from horror movies and stuff there. Should be an all-around good time. So, um, But you'll get all the information there on the website. Also, Naughty Nashville. Jules runs that one. If you go to the Naughty, Naughty Author Events page on Facebook. I always get that one screwed up. The Naughty Author Events page on Facebook. You can get more information there. 
that is mostly a romance signing, but a lot of those authors also write dark shit, some paranormal stuff, some some even dabble in horror, I believe, and I will be there with all books from all my pen names and stuff. So if you're going to Nashville or can go to Nashville or anywhere around Nashville, um, come see me there. Come to that event. So today we are going to be reading from Tales from the Crib. That's Casey Hill's collection of limericks and short stories. I've known Casey from a long time. She's kind of a, a staple in the horror world. You hear that cat? What the fuck was that? Holy shit. That was loud, man. <laughs> That's a cat. It's not a baby. <laughs> keep doing it. That's perfect for Tales from the Crib. Whining like that. Anyways, I'm going to keep going over your loud ass meows, cat. Take that. Anyways, um, where was I going with that? I've known Casey a long time. She was part of the Horror Authors Carnival that I started a long time ago. It was a group on Facebook. I think the, the group still exists now. Um, but I've known her for a long time. She's great. She writes all kinds of horror. She has quite a few books out. Uh, so definitely look her up. Her information will be down at the bottom in the YouTube description as always. Uh, so make sure you check down there. Uh, let me see. Her author info says, You can find Casey Hill on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok under the handle Kate at Casey Hill Author. And be sure to check out her website, CaseyHillAuthor.com, and watch for her hashtag Weird Science Wednesday posts, where she goes into all types of paranormal and supernatural creatures that fascinate us all. Stay tuned for her next release coming this fall, Dark Woods, with another Foxwood Village spin where a family takes a camping trip in Virginia and ends up unearthing poltergeist activity of a family murdered in the 1700s. That sounds pretty awesome. So let's see what uh, the Tales from the Crib book blurb says for us. Uh, In this collection of short horror stories and limericks, children are the main catalyst of fear. Every person has this innate fear of creepy kids. Black-eyed kids, zombies, possessions, hauntings, monsters in your closet, the least expected scenarios. A man goes through hypnosis to unlock his childhood and repress memories from when he was an orphan. What he uncovers is a madhouse of secrets stemming from an insane asylum he had been placed in. What would you do if you found out that you are the son of the devil himself? When a freak show owner takes on three men claiming to turn into zombies as a main attraction, he doesn't bargain for what happens afterwards. Becoming the main attraction in the Appalachian area was his dream. However, greed always leads you down a path of doom. Amelia wakes up disoriented, sitting beside a burning car with a voice ringing in her head that she did it. As the night comes flooding back into her mind, Amelia must grapple with the skeletons in her closet as she reveals to the officer questioning her most deepest, darkest secrets of insanity. What could possibly go wrong for teenagers at a lake party dressed as their favorite slasher movies? Gore and chaos. A killer is on the loose, taking them out in pairs as they try to decipher who the deranged lunatic could possibly be. 80s slasher style meets the modern world in this classic horror short. Julie was your average New Yorker. She went to work, came home, and slept like everyone else. However, her life would change forever the day she meets two strange children who knock on her door asking to use her phone. These are just a few of the stories in this macabre of horror. Dive in and find your favorite creepy story. Okay, so as I said earlier, usually I read the first chapter, first two chapters. This is a short story collection for the most part, but the first story is pretty long for a short story, so to read the whole thing would take a really long episode. I'm trying to keep these, you know, fairly short. I know how the fucking attention span. Everybody's got the attention span now of a fucking four-year-old. Um, you know, we, everything has to be like under three minutes and shit, or people are like clicking next. They're swiping left and right and fucking everywhere. You know what I mean? So we got to keep this kind of short. Um, so I asked her for a stopping point in case it does go on too long, and she said a good point would be right around the mid midway point where the character says five down. So hopefully I'll remember to stop there and I won't just blow right past it and just keep going and leave you guys uh, listening to me read for like an hour and a half. Um, I'll try my best. But let's get down to business and read from Casey Hills. Let me turn up my brightness a little bit. I'm going to read from Casey Hills, Tales from the Crib, Gabler's Asylum of the Damned. The days of my childhood had long since passed, leaving the memories of my troubled days along with them. I spent most of my younger days in an orphanage. Those were the days that if they couldn't handle you in the orphanage, they sent you to the insane asylum, regardless of mental behaviors. Thinking back to those days has always been hard for me. 
my Kindle would cooperate, hard for me to do. I had put a mental block on most of that time frame until I was around 16 and placed in a real home with a family. I lay with my arms under my head, reclined back on the comfortably cushioned couch in the therapist's office. So what is causing your sudden impulse to be hypnotized? Why do you feel now you have to find out what happened? Dr. Kavlarian asked while scribbling notes onto his legal pad. The nightmares, of course. I want to know if they're real or not. There's so much pain and suffering in them, with children dying, and then there's the fire. I told you, I researched all orphanage. There were no orphanages that burned down during your childhood, he stated, talking with his pen at me. I sat upright from the couch and into a sitting position. What if I wasn't in an orphanage? What, what, what if I was one of those sent to the insane asylum because they couldn't adopt me out? I checked all of your records. There was nothing of the sort. You were in Sunnydale Orphanage from the time you were put up for adoption until you were adopted. I still want to know, I yelled, irritated. My memories are blocked for a reason. Sexual molestation or something insidious happened while I was an orphan. Please, I cried, breathing in a breath and relaxing my tension. Please, Doc, help me find what it is. Dr. Kavlarian released a sigh and motioned to me with his hand. Lie down on the couch and make yourself comfortable. I complied, scooted on the couch until I was as comfortable as I knew I would get, and crossed my hands over my stomach. Do you mind? You're fucking up my reading! <sighs> I complied. <laughs> I already read that part. Okay. Now, the important part of this will be for me to... Now, the important part of this would be for me to be able to touch your arm. Are you okay with this? Hold on, I gotta see what this cat needs. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Damn, pussies. Let me see, where was I? Sorry, Casey, for interrupting your book. All this pussy madness on the other side of that door. Now, the important part of this will be for me to be able to touch your arm. Are you okay with this? I nodded my head. Okay, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and then release. I did, as I was told, and sighed heavily. Good. Now I want you to clear your mind and release any thoughts you have. Watch your thoughts form into birds, and when I touch your arm, release those birds into the air. Behind my closed eyes, I balled all of my thoughts into paper balls that turned into birds that flew off into the air. Now, you will begin to feel yourself become heavy as you slip deeper and deeper into your mind. Every time I touch your body, you will slip deeper and deeper into your subconscious. If he was touching my arm, I had no clue, but I began to feel heavy, as he suggested. Now, I want you to go to your happy place we have talked about. The beach that had the pretty black sand. I want you to visualize this in your mind. As you go deeper and deeper into yourself, the black sands will start to lighten your mind. Do you see the sands? I murmured a yes. Excellent. Now walk along these sands until you come to a point where it merges with a different landscape. When you step across the threshold, you will feel yourself deep in your own hidden, hidden memories. I walked along the sandy beach, feeling the breeze ruffle my hair. As I walked, I came closer to an abandoned structure that had no business being on a beach. I began to run toward the building as darkness descended on the building. It was a massive brick building that had a Warsaw air about it. The windows had bars over them, and it looked as if it were once a hospital. This was not the orphanage that I remember from my childhood. Lightning shattered the sky, and I ducked from instinct and fear. What do you see? Dr. Kavlarian asked. I see a brick hospital, I replied, walking up the steps and peering through the glass doors. My attention was caught as I sat my attention was caught as I saw at least seven children run past the door, laughing and screaming. I opened the door and stepped through, following the children to where they had run. They stood in a circle around a young boy who sat on the ground. I inched closer to the children and peered over the top of them. On the floor was a circle carved into the wood that was at least nine feet in radius. The boy sat atop an inverted star with markings all around it. The boy looked right at me, 
The, look, the boy looked right at me and locked his eyes on me. I looked around to see if there were any other people present he could have been staring at. When I returned my eyes to him, he was still staring at me. Charlie is weird, yelled one of the little girls. Look at him, staring off into nothing. All the children began to laugh. He is me, I mumbled, turning to walk away. I then tumbled into the darkness for a few moments. I realized the doc had begun yelling at me to respond. Who are you? he yelled louder. The little boy sitting in the middle of the floor is me. I can't be but twelve years old. We are all dressed in white nightgowns. I regained my wits, and when I opened my eyes, I was no longer being stared at by the little boy. I was sitting in the middle of the floor with all the children staring at me, pointing and laughing. I looked down at my hands and instead saw little boy hands. Where am I? I whispered. He doesn't know where he is, a boy jabbed, and the others laughed as well. Have you forgotten already, you orphan? You were sent here. I can see why, too. You really are nuts. I stood up from the center of the circle and looked down at the floor. A screwdriver lay on the floor at my feet. I had drawn the circle myself, but what did it mean? I couldn't control the actions of the little boy as hard as I willed him to run from the group of children. Would you like to hear a story my mother told me before she died? I asked the kids to gather around me. The devil visited my mother before she got pregnant with me and told her he would grant her what God would not, a child. The child would grow up, and when he reached the age of twelve, he would become the left hand of his father and, and implement his evil deeds. He gave her a name to tell me for me to call when I wished for my father to return. Would you like to know what it is? The kids looked between themselves, not wanting to answer the question. His name was Gabler. I walked the perimeter of the circle with the screwdriver I'd picked up. He said I would need the blood of seven innocents to invoke his name into a sacred space just for him. I stopped in front of the boy who had been making jeers at me. I looked into his eyes and cocked my head at him. You are freaking weird. Look at his eyes. They're black, he squealed to the other children. I leaned in close to him and whispered in his ear. My father's eyes were black. I stabbed the boy in the throat, and the blood spurted out of his neck. Out of, out of his neck wound onto the floor. The door swing, swing shut, locking the other children in the room with me. I willed the boy to stop what he was doing, but I was just a spectator while all of this happened. The piano on the other side of the room lurched from the wall that it sat on and barreled toward the children as they ran screaming from it. The piano caught one of the girls and flipped over her leg, pinning her to the ground. I walked over to the little girl slowly as she screamed for help. I jabbed the screwdriver underneath her chin and watched as the life left her eyes. The blood pooled around her and hit one of the drawings on the floor where the circle was drawn. The other children pounded on the doors and windows as the thunder rocked the room. The lights went off, and they were in utter darkness. However, I could see perfectly fine. The lightning struck ever so often, illuminating the room, and I watched them cry and plead for, her, for help to save them. I ignored them all for a moment and walked to a mirror that stood in the corner. As I walked closer to the mirror, another image came into focus in front of me. I was staring into the black eyes of a sinister-looking fabrication of a person. Father, I have killed two of the seven. Are there other ways I can cause them torment before they die? The figure smiled and the doors unlocked where the children could escape. Hunt them, son. I nodded in my compliance and turned from the mirror and walked through the black, blackened asylum. It was just a few moments of walking through the halls when I heard crying coming from one of the rooms. I held my hand out and the door flew from its hinges, hitting the wall and bursting into thousands of splinters. I lifted my hands upwards and the beds came off the ground, revealing a child underneath one. I pushed the beds at the wall in the same manner I had done the door. They clattered to the floor, and there, where the beds had been, hunkered another girl. I was in front of her without moving my feet. I grabbed her by the hair on her head and dragged her over to the bed. Frames littered against the wall. They had broken apart, revealing the metal poles that ran in between the sides. I lifted the young girl up and threw her down on top of the protruding pipe. Blood gurgled from her mouth, and the wound in her torso saturated her nightgown. 
I ripped the nightgown from her body and carried it back to my circle, dropping it on another symbol drawn on the floor. The next child I found was at the top of the stairway to the forbidden ward. I could see him watching through the slats of the staircase railing. I was behind him before he knew I had moved. I shoved his head in between the banister beams while he squirmed to get loose. I broke the iron bars loose from the railing and began to bend them tighter around his neck. I could hear him begin to strangle and gag, trying to catch a breath of air. In one sharp motion, I pulled the iron bars hard across one another. The force of the yank sent his head toppling to the floor below. I placed his head on the circle as well and made my way back out of the room to find another child. I had three left to collect blood from. Instead of walking, I felt myself begin to float off the ground. I felt something sharp cut into my leg and looked down to see one of the children trying to stab me with the same screwdriver I had used on the first two. I flipped my body upside down to where my face was eye level with the girl and grabbed her by her little head, grabbed her by her head. I lifted her feet off the floor and she dropped the screwdriver to hold on to my hands as she kicked and screamed while I floated higher. The ceiling rested on the fourth floor and I was inches away from bumping it with my feet. I eyed my surroundings and glimpsed the unfinished railing with iron rods sticking out. I flew towards the rods as the girl screamed in my arms. I impaled her head with the rods, sending them through each of her eye sockets. Damn. Leaving an eye perfectly shish kebobbed on the end of the metal. I plucked an eye from a spear and floated back to the room, laying the eye on another symbol drawn on the floor. Five down, two to go. I mumbled to myself and walked from the room. I think that was it, right? Five down, two to go? That was the word? Yeah? You guys are supposed to point at me and be interactive and be like, That's the word, Carver! That's the word! Like Blue's Clues or something. Like Door of the Explorer. Swiper, no swiping! <laughs> Where's my interactive audience, man? Tell me in the comments. Stop. Stop reading. That's it. Five down. Two to go. All right. That was awesome, man. That was pretty graphic. Sick, Casey. Casey, you got a fucked up mind. In fact, I should go back and read her dedication. Just in case her kids see some of this. So they can know. Casey's dedication says, To my three creepy kids. <laughs> Y'all are the reason my creativity is so frightening. Damn right it is. That was awesome, Casey. Thank you so much for trusting me with your words. Make sure you check the YouTube description below this to get all of Casey's information, to get her links, and go check out her work. Follow her. Watch um, her hashtag. I said what it was earlier. I don't remember now. Now i got to scroll back up because that's going to bother me. See? What was it? She does hashtag Weird Science Wednesday posts. So look for those, all right? Um, she's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that, TikTok and stuff, so... Find her there. Look for her links down below. Um, I guess it's time to spin that wheel now, right? So, let's see. Time to spin the wheel. Let's see who comes up next. John Athens the Groomer. We just put that one on there, but that's a pretty cool one. So John Athens the Groomer will be the next episode. I can't wait to read that. Johnny Atham is a super cool guy. Um, man, he's got a shit ton of books, awesome covers and stuff, so I can't read, wait to read his work. That's going to be awesome. Yes, so Johnny Athan will be next, and I will be erasing his information from there, and I will be adding Mr. Frank. Frank Edler's Death Gets a Book is going to be added to the wheel in John Athan's spot, and uh, that's Mr. Frank from the Bazong podcast. So that's going to be pretty cool to finally read his stuff on the show or to put him up on the wheel and spin it and see what happens. Um, so again, as always, guys, please click the little bell, subscribe, share my stuff, comment. I really want to interact with you guys. Let me know how, what you think of the episode, how it's going. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, as always, if you're a horror author and you want to be added to the list for me to read your stuff, please reach out to me on social media on Facebook or email me at carverpike at gmail.com. Um, make sure you tune in for the Written in Red podcast that I do with my three horror writing brothers, uh, we do, um, basically talk about everything in the indie horror world and the writing process and all that kind of stuff. So I do that with Aaron Beauregard, Daniel J. Volpe, and Roland Bercy Jr. You'll find the description to that show, the YouTube version down below in the description of this video. And you can also listen to it in podcasts anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you subscribe to that and help share that and stuff, that helps us out a lot too. So I think that's about it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.
While you say goodbye, take a look at this quick video showing Carver Pike reader selfies. Thank you to everybody for sending these in. Keep sending them in and I'll keep making them. Thank you.